The shoulder, a ball and socket joint, is the most mobile joint in the body. Because the shoulder is stabilized by muscles and tendons, rather than by bone, it has a wide range of motion. However, this great degree of motion has a trade-off. The stability of the shoulder is dependent upon the surrounding soft tissue and can result in a number of problems not faced by other joints supported by bony structures. The shoulder is comprised of three main bones. The collarbone, clavicle, the shoulder blade, scapula, and the upper arm bone, humerus, which extends from the shoulder blade to the elbow. A healthy shoulder can be damaged by a rotator cuff tear, a superiorly migrated humeral head, and an arthritic eroded or collapsed glenohumeral joint. When non-surgical treatments are no longer effective, it is time to consider shoulder replacement. There are two types of shoulder replacement surgeries, primary shoulder and reverse shoulder. A reverse shoulder procedure is needed when the patient has a massive, irreparable rotator cuff tear and arthritis. When the rotator cuff tears, the muscles lose their ability to keep the humerus centered on the glenoid, causing the humerus to move upward and out of the socket. In a reverse shoulder replacement surgery, the shoulder anatomy is reversed, allowing the deltoid to become the main functioning muscle in absence of a healthy rotator cuff. The surgeon will make an incision in the front of the shoulder, long enough for the surgeon to see and access the joint. Once the shoulder joint is exposed, the head of the humerus is removed. Next, the socket, glenoid, is cleaned out and prepared for the implant. A glenoid plate is inserted to act as a base for the metal ball, glenosphere. A metal stem is then cemented or press fit into the canal of the arm bone, depending on the surgeon's preference. The metal ball is fixed to the socket and a plastic component, the humeral liner, is fixed to the upper end of the humerus, essentially reversing the ball and socket joint's original position. Once the implant is in place, the surgeon sutures the incision and applies a dressing. The specifics of recovery and rehabilitation will be determined by the surgeon based on a patient's condition.